dear 10th graders, my name is Dr. Munkav Tenev and today we are going to talk about unusual foods around the world. Are you ready? Let's get started. Would you be hungry enough to eat a brain sandwich, a fried spider, a poisonous fish or a snail? Have a look at these pictures. Would you go to a restaurant that would serve them? Would you be willing to try a pig's nose or a real brain, cooked properly of course, snails or insects or this type of seafood? Well, don't be surprised. All these examples are foods that are cooked and offered in many restaurants around the world. Today we're going to find out interesting details about unusual foods. So let's start with brain sandwiches. Brain sandwiches typically consist of sliced bread or buns filled with slices of calves or pigs brains, properly cooked, of course, fried, for example. In Indiana, USA, fried brain sandwiches are typically served with onion rings and fried potatoes. <laughs> and they are so popular in the area that the dish is featured annually at the city's West Side Nightclub Fall Festival. Go figure. Insects. Human insect eating is common to cultures in most parts of the world, including Central and South America, Africa, Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. Today, insect eating is uncommon in North American Europe, for example, as you well know, but insects remain a popular food elsewhere, and some companies are trying to introduce insects as food into Western diets. How do you feel about this attempt? to introduce insects in our cuisine. CNN has published an entire article claiming that on a morning in the not so distant future, we might toast bread made with cricket flour, you can see a cricket in the pictures, drink a protein smoothie made from locust powder, you can see a locust, eat scrambled eggs made extra creamy with the fat from caterpillars, you can see a cute green and black caterpillar, with a side of mealworm baker. bacon. You can see the mealworms. So, crickets, locusts, uh, caterpillars, and mealworms. How do you feel about these ingredients? Would you like to see them on your breakfast table? I'm not sure myself. So, that meal, according to CNN, will give us four times the iron, more than three times the protein, and more key vitamins and minerals than the bread, smoothie, eggs, and bacon that we eat today, all while, by the way, saving the planet. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I'm ready to try out insects, but I'm definitely for exploring opportunities to save our planet and not consume so much of its resources. Fugu. Fugu, also called a puffer fish, is a luxury food ingredient in Japan and can only be prepared by specially licensed chefs because of the toxins stored within its body. Acclaimed for its distinctive texture, fugu is delicious, rather uh, whether raw, boiled or fried, and is sure to get you hooked once you try it. Hmm, I think there is too much of a danger to go with it, but I will definitely give it a try in the right circumstances. Uh, this would probably happen if I trusted the skill of the uh, chef. And I'm really happy that only specialized licensed chef can actually cook and serve this very, by the way, poisonous fish. So, let's move on to studying some useful vocabulary that I used when describing this unusual food. So, acclaimed for its distinctive texture. Acclaimed means praised, honored, acknowledged. So, fugu is acclaimed for its texture, which means a lot of people praise its taste. Fugu is sure to get you hooked once you try. If you get hooked, it means that you become addicted. You become enthusiastic about something. Let's move on to the next unusual food that I prepared for you, fried tarantulas. Yes, fried tarantula are packed with zinc, folic acid and protein. They are tasty and cheap and can be found in any food market in Cambodia, for example. Although vicious and poisonous when they are alive, the edible spiders, spiders which means the ones that you can eat, are a true delicacy rolled in sugar and garlic and then deep fried in oil. 
The spider started to be eaten during the worst political reigns and saved Cambodian from starving. A cross between chicken and cod is said to be the taste of the crunchy tarantula. Yes, a tarantula looks very much in taste as something combined between fish and chicken. Hmm, that's interesting. So, although vicious and poisonous when alive, vicious means mean, malicious, cruel, and the spiders are famous for being vicious. The edible spiders are a true delicacy rolled in sugar or garlic. So, edible means fit to be eaten. So, what do they look like? They taste like. They taste like a cross between chicken and cod. So, cross means a combination of both. And cod, I just wanted you to know, so cod is a type of fish. So, a tarantula is half chicken, half fish. Let's move on to the bat soups. The bat soup traditionally served in Thailand is cooked at low heat and seasoned with herbs and spices. Garlic, onions and chili pepper are recommended to be added to help reduce the bad smell. Bat fans can choose from various listings. Grilled, barbecued, deep fried, stews and stir fry. The taste of bat soup is similar to that of chicken soup. Well, I'm not sure I'm brave enough to try a bat soup. Now, what is the key vocabulary that we need to memorize from these descriptions? The bat soup is seasoned with herbs. Seasoned means when you add spices, salt, pepper, mustard. So seasoned means you add spices. Bats fans can choose from various listings. Listings refer to the entries in the list or in the menu. So there is an entire menu and you can see a wide variety of bath soups in it, in Thailand. Various listings, grilled, barbecued, deep fried, stews and stir fry. Stir fry means fried very quickly over high heat. For example, the way we fry French fries, right? You cut the potatoes and you fry them in boiling oil, right? They don't cook slowly, they cook really fast. Various listings, grilled, barbecue, deep fried, stews and stir fry. So a stew is a dish made by boiling ingredients slowly. It's the opposite of stir fry. So stews are kind of soups that we boil very, really slowly. Now, the discussion points of today's lesson. What is your opinion regarding these unusual foods from around the world? Which of them would you be willing to try? Do you think in the future we will move towards a healthier diet and we will consume less, let's say, chicken or pork uh, or beef and we will consume more crickets and caterpillars and worms? Are we going to eat more insects in order to save the resources of the planet? Probably. And now let's learn some really fun idioms about food. So when we say something is souped up, or if something sells like hot cakes, or if someone is a big cheese, or if someone is the cream of the crop, if you butter someone up, or if someone is a smart cookie, or if you egg someone on, what do we in fact refer to? Let's have a look at these examples to understand how these expressions are used in real life contexts. So, the car was souped up with shiny rims and a loud stereo. So, souped up means made more stylish in our case. The new Harry Potter book sold like hot cakes. If something sells like hot cakes, it means a lot of people buy it, so it's very popular. I wanted to spice things up in the office, so I bought some red and gold paint. If you want to spice things up, it means you want to make things more exciting. On Monday, I'm going to spill the beans about my travel plans. If you spill the beans, you reveal the truth or you tell everyone a secret, whether it's your secret or it's somebody else's secret. Take Mandy's advice with a pinch of salt. She doesn't always do her research. If you are asked to take something with a pinch of salt, it means that you shouldn't take it seriously and you shouldn't believe everything that that person says. You are going to have to really use your noodle on this crossword puzzle. It's an extra difficult one. So if you are encouraged to use your noodle, it means that you need to think really hard and use your brain in order to solve this problem or to solve this crossword puzzle. The unionized grocers have been enjoying the gravy train for 20 years. The gravy train refers to very uh, good pay 
for minimal work, which means they didn't work really hard, but they were paid really well. Gravy train. The professor's daughter had her college diploma handed to her on a silver platter. If something is handed on a silver platter, it means that you receive that without working for something or without making the effort. So too easily handed on a silver platter if you receive something with no effort. Angelo is a hard nut to crack when someone is bothering him like this. If someone is a hard nut to crack, it means that that person is difficult to understand. We usually use it when we describe a person. And choosing a location for our news store is a hot potato right now. So a hot potato refers to a controversial or difficult subject. Hot potato. Very beautiful idioms, isn't it? And the last group, Harry has been out to lunch ever since he lost his job. So if someone is out to lunch, it means that someone's crazy or mad. Your daughter is one smart cookie. She reads much higher than her grade level. One smart cookie, of course, a very intelligent person. Just explain the bread and butter of your report. Don't have to go into details. So the bread and butter are the necessities on the main things of a report in our situation. So explain the basics, bread and butter. Even though I'm majoring in art, I'm taking a math course because my dad says I shouldn't put all my eggs in one basket. So if you put all your eggs in one basket, it means that you rely only on one thing and you don't have a B plan or plan B. And now I put together a list of exciting restaurants that I would definitely love to visit one day. And I'm encouraging you to explore these places. And if you have the opportunity to visit the countries where these restaurants are located, you should definitely give them a try. The Labasan Waterfall Restaurant in Philippines. This unique surrounding is all natural and barely touched by people. Visitors enjoy authentic local cuisine and dine at the bamboo tables. The feet of the visitors are rinsed, which means washed lightly by the crystal clear water of the waterfall. The running waterfall works as a natural air conditioner, so even though in Thailand it's very hot, you will probably feel very relaxed there. Okay? Guests are also provided with some entertainment in the resort. Traditional dance and music shows are often performed there. So two more images of this amazing waterfall restaurant. I would definitely give it a try uh, in the summer, in August, for example, when it's very hot. How about you? The second restaurant that I recommend is the Vertigo restaurant the Moon Bar in Bangkok. Found at the very top of the skyscraper, the restaurant belongs to the Banyan Tree Hotel. The unique sky bar is unusual for its shape due to its elongated deck, which protrudes, which means extends above the building, gives a feeling of floating in the air above the sky. Why to go there? Enjoy a great variety of cocktails and the breathtaking views of the city. Well, if you are afraid of heights, you will probably not you know, feel very comfortable there. But I can tell you that the views are really fantastic in that restaurant. So as for myself, I would definitely give it a try if I ever visit Bangkok. Very beautiful. The Ita restaurant in the Maldives. Ita means mother of pearl and is one of the most exciting restaurants in the world, of course. Built five meters below sea level, the restaurant seats 14 guests, so it's a very small restaurant. The guests get in by a spiral staircase and find themselves in a space a striking or impressive panoramic underwater view. The restaurant provides views to the reef and various fish species circumnavigating the transparent structure so you feel like being in a tube and you can see all this beautiful sea life above you very beautiful very exciting so if you like the ocean and if you are into fish then that's definitely going to be an unforgettable experience for you so dear 10th graders i hope you enjoy enjoy today's lesson i hope you found out a lot of interesting things about unusual foods around the world and you will definitely uh, give them a try whenever you get the chance. I also wanted to make you curious about unusual restaurants around the world that are placed in unique locations and that offer breathtaking views. And last but not least, I hope today's lesson helped you learn more interesting vocabulary related to food, vocabulary that you will actively use next time when you describe your favorite dish or a dish you have never tried but would be willing to give a try. 
Thank you so much for your attention. Please stay tuned for more interesting video lessons from our digital library. Take care, all the best. Thank you.